you all doubtlessly will recognize a situation in which you practice a composition or a certain passage over and over again, slow, faster, slow again, with strong accents, counter accents, fingers high, fingers low, fingers stressed, fingers relaxed, and you just give it up because there is no light at the end of the tunnel. Somewhere deep down you know that no matter what you will figure out, with whatever you will come up with, you will be never able to climb on that huge mountain of technical success. And these moments apply to all of us. Whether you are a student at the best conservatories of the planet, prepare for a concert in Carnegie Hall, or simply play as music lover for the sake of music. How often did I drink coffee in the Amsterdam Conservatory's cafeteria, back in the day still in that old post office in the Van Baarlestraat, with pianists, truly great pianists with unbelievable technical skills, just so turned up, stressed, frustrated almost because of the never-ending path to pianistic glory. Yes, we all put up big smiles because it all is great. We fight a heroic battle of pianistic superiority that we all know we're gonna lose. But anyway, we try to fit in, please our teachers and hope for that one day that we might figure things out. We deep down know that day will never come, but that message is ignored so often that we simply don't hear it anymore. Not to forget about the great business the physiotherapists around the corner had because of our conservatory and the high level of piano class. I still remember sitting there because I apparently had a problem with the way the muscle of my thumb was designed. My teacher had figured out that its trail along my hand was not as he thought it was supposed to be. And so, when my thumb one day really hurt, Instead of blaming the five hours I practiced daily, apart from my two hours organ practice, the pain I was told was caused because of the strange way my thumb's muscle decided to travel to my arm. And so the physiotherapist around the corner did good business. He figured out it had something to do with the strength or better the lack of strength of my shoulder blades were supplied with. And don't think he was a kind of mediocre doctor, the guy was known internationally. But not a single advice was given to me to take it easier with my practice. The mountain was waiting to be conquered. And the strangest thing of all was, we were all, as many of you are today, practicing so much on pieces written centuries ago. And blind as I was, not even realizing, that the level I aimed for was lower than that imaginary Chopin or Liszt benchmark. We even did not think about it. Of course, those 19th century gods were high above any reach, not only of mine, no one could climb that high. Did Icarus not burn his wings when flying too close to the sun? And don't think this is just a story that only applies to professionals. Even if you consider yourself to be an amateur, let alone what that really means, you have the same struggles. Ever played a Waldstein sonata a tempo? Ever pleased your teacher enough with that Czerny tempo? Ever started to work on a Mozart sonata that went fine? Until your teacher decided the time was there to bring the piece on a higher level, today almost totally meaning a higher tempo thereby not only destroying the beauty you thought to see in it, but also destroy that essential feeling that you might be ever able to perform the music as it is supposed to sound. As if studying music, playing music stands equal to struggle, eternal struggle, suffering even, and the more suffering simply means the better we are doing. Music equals pain. Sharing the beauty created 200 years ago equals frustration. Isn't that the message my teacher gave me? Your teachers give you? Ask them if your Waldstein is as it should be and guess what the response will be? It's okay for you, for your level. But ask Polini and he will answer the same thing. He might be further the road than you are, 
but not there, not yet, which means never. One of the first light bulb moments for me was the day I heard that young Russian pianist, of which I don't remember the name, and of which the world has never heard much anymore any later. A pity, since it was a really great talent. He stayed with a friend of my former teacher, practicing, as I was told, about 10 hours a day. That was necessary, since he was about to play the famous Mazeppa, one of Liszt's show pieces. I remember little of the performance itself, only that it sounded like a machine that was playing, but I do remember the way this 24-year-old pianist came on stage. He was tall, thin, dark eyes, and I still see his slim, long, beautiful fingers bent over the piano's side when he greeted the large crowd in Antwerp. In a different time, with different lighting, with another costume, he very well could have been the twin brother of Liszt. But what I did not see, I remember this still so well, was a smile on his face. Maybe the Russian blood prevented him from smiling, as I did not see any shine in his eyes. But what to me was a real shock was the way he walked on the stage towards the piano. Not straight up as Liszt would have done, but the back bent. Not able anymore on that young age to walk straight up. If we never heard anything anymore from him, it's because of that. He was 24 years old and his body showed signs of a 75 plus man. He was gone even before his career started. And to add some sadness on top of it, even he had not reached that imaginary plateau our teachers and musicologists keep telling us, even today, to millions and millions of piano students, somewhere miraculously hangs in the sky, invisible to anyone, but rest assured is there. It sounds hard, but the life and career of that young musical talent was simply destroyed by the people who were given the trust to educate him, to flourish his talents. But instead they destroyed it with their fake stories of musical historical truth and romantic suffering. You all know my story. My eyes really opened that one moment when I took my bike in Amsterdam to go to the Walloon church for a lesson with Jacques van Noordmesse. I just came out of piano class playing Mozart's F major sonata, Kachelverzeichnis 332, and was about to play Bach's fifth trio sonata. In the glimpse, I saw both scores in front of me and I suddenly wondered, based on what kind of mysterious unwritten rule, I played the Mozart sonata so much faster than Bach's trio sonata. As I was taught, and probably most of you are taught in that stupid Bach system, where Chopin seems to live in another universe than Beethoven, and Mozart in another solar system than Bach, on that particular moment in front of that huge building in the Van Baarlestraat, all those separate worlds suddenly merged into another. And so instantly it became clear that I was hurting that Mozart sonata by pushing it over the limits of what the composer and the furthest part of his imagination ever could have meant with this work. Of course, when I asked my piano teacher next time, there was no one opening the door for me. No questions asked. That's how today's mainstream system survives, because they have no answers to give. But what it made me realize is something that might change your life as well. I realized that there are basically two options for us musicians. Either we continue to be a puppet in that post-romantic, post-industrial movement where we worship the daily frustration, pain, stress, Accept the unreachable goal set by the gods called Chopin, Liszt and Beethoven, of whom we never question their divine capacities. Or we start to think for ourselves. Allow ourselves to step outside this mainstream bubble, this intellectual blindness, and step in a time machine to bring us back to the paradises created by Mozart, Beethoven, Chopin and so many others. A paradise in which we still have to work disciplined, since those composers were not particularly hobbyists at their instruments, but shake off that irritating blanket left by the Industrial Revolution. Accept the fact that those composers were no gods, 
stupid humans that gave the best of their incredible minds to us to enjoy, to play, with the sole responsibility to share the beauty they have brought to earth. And simply by learning to think for yourself beyond the closed doors of our conservatories, universities and music schools where we will be pushed far beyond our limits, you will see that what those great men left you on the paper of their scores contain all that is needed for your personal journey. Those hated metronome marks, of which we talk so much lately on this channel, will be your guide. Just activate your metronome app and try it out for yourself. Just be aware to use their system and not ours. Every click on the metronome will give the subdivision of the note value in the famous MMs. That's how magically simple it all is. So not one, two, three, but one and two and three. And suddenly you will see that you actually can play that stupid journey etude and that it is a nice exercise to start your day with after all. You will see that you can play the partitique in the tempo Beethoven had in mind. I cannot promise you that the Waldstein will be in reach of for all of us. The Hammerklavier remains for the happy few. I will not give you false hopes here, as many Chopin pieces remain really complex and difficult to play. But for the pieces that are for you to play, you will finally have the feeling, no, the conviction even, that you did the right thing for once. Finished the piece. Not left it behind in the middle of the road, we're told it's the right one. But arriving at the musical paradises these people created for us. For us. Let's not forget that. Yes, that comes with a responsibility. But it's not up to me to tell you what that means. Each of us has to discover and decide that for ourselves. But one thing I can promise to you. It will change your musical life in a more powerful meaning that you can think of right now. Just try it, not for one hour, but for a few months. And share with us how that journey feels to you. So if this video was helpful to you, share it with a friend to who it might be helpful as well. And subscribe to this channel. Don't forget to hit the bell so YouTube can notify you for future updates and become a stronghold of this musical movement by becoming an authentic sound insider at patreon.com. You'll find a strong community there. My personal practicing sessions, my library of personal scores, previews of the YouTube videos and insight updates as well. Link below and in the description box. Thanks for watching and see you soon again.